My new channel's name is Plauk. My other name is Giselle Maria Martin. I am a citizen of Plaukwet Nation, one of many nations who are responsible to these lands and waters. This place is home. Every plant, every animal, every insect here has a role in contributing to the community of life and the human beings of Tlokwet are not exempt from that. Our ancestors have worked very closely with all life to help grow biodiversity over many years. We know we've been here for thousands of years and during that time you know we certainly had to work hard to maintain you know, our possession and ownership of this territory. This is the largest coastal temperate rainforest remaining in the world, spanning 100 million acres along the west coast of North America. It is home to stunning wildlife, ancient forests, and vast coastlines. But this place isn't just beautiful. It is a prime example of indigenous-led natural climate solutions. Indigenous nations have lived in reciprocity with the lands and waters in Cleoquot Sound since time immemorial. The old growth trees here are international pillars of life, pulling out and storing atmospheric carbon more efficiently than any human technology in existence today. What really ties this place together are the many indigenous communities that have lived here and stewarded these lands since time immemorial. And in the Emerald Edge, what we work to do is to really support those communities, to have strong capacity and leadership, sustainable development opportunities, and really uh, the rights and authority to manage the lands and waters. Despite colonialism and industrialization, New Channels Nations continue the intergenerational work of upholding rights and responsibilities to protect the territory, especially ancestral gardens and old growth forests. Wanachus Hilthuis, also known as Mears Island, is a treasure of old growth forest and was slated to be clear-cut logged in the 1980s. This was and continues to be in direct conflict with Indigenous law. To protect the island, New Channels Nations confronted the logging corporation and the Canadian governments who sold illicit tree farm licenses. The loggers arrived in two different crew boats and uh, they uh, sent uh, the fallers ashore on a small skiff. They would put four or five of them in there and then they would come ashore with chainsaws. And my uncle Moses told them when they arrived at the beach, as they are welcome ashore here. This is our garden and you're not allowed to cut it. So you're supposed to leave your chainsaws in the boat. You cannot take them into the forest because this is our garden. And they went there and they said, no, you're not. We're not allowing you to into this territory. The territory that you're in is the Hausa territory, the Tlaukwa territory. We're not going to allow you to do clear-cut logging here. We marched right down Douglas Street and advised the uh, government at that time that uh, we are here to put an injunction on uh, Mears Island, which we did and that injunction still stands today. If it wasn't for our past leadership um, putting their foot down, everything that you see in, in our Hahuthli, which is territory, would have been clear-cut log. I watched my grandfather really lead the way along with other nations, the, our brothers and sisters on the Colloquiate Nation. Now, during the global climate emergency, remaining forests are still under threat. 
we need sustained and united efforts to protect these forests for their ecological, cultural, and life-giving significance, and as a needed natural climate solution. What we have to do as society in our collaborations across difference is find common ground and balance that transcend cultural barriers, that transcend political barriers. Because for me, reflecting on my traditions, what really brings us together is our mutual and shared dependence on the natural world. The forest of the Emerald Edge are incredibly important when you look at what we need to be doing to address the global climate crisis. Some of these trees over here are like thousands of years old. So imagine the carbon they are storing within them. And if I want to break it down, like in a simple terms, it is like the leaves are absorbing the carbon dioxide and putting it in their branches, in the leaves, and pumping it down in the soil. Old growth forest has already accumulated carbon for a thousand years, and by keeping it alive, by keeping it protected, it's going to continue accumulating. That carbon stays locked in. It's like a carbon sink. Climate change is, is one of our priorities now as a government to, uh, to pay attention to uh, what's going on globally and where can we intersect and use our ability and our knowledge and our legal authority as a tribe that has rights to these resources. I think people have realized that we've been extracting We've been in an extraction economy, and we've been taking from what provides us life. The Nature Conservancy's uh, mission of preserving the lands and waters on which all life depends is, is an indigenous concept that, that many indigenous nations around the world share. Every stream and every river here had a tzatzat kasi associated with it, a river guardian, if you will. And they took care of those rivers year round. So if there's a drought, moving baby salmon to another part of the same river where they would survive and optimizing that. So that's just an example of these ecological caretaking that has gone on for a long, long time in these areas. We've been dismantled from accessing our homeland. They banned the potlatch, which was preventing the chiefs from harvesting resources from our mountains and feeding our people at the potlatch and then they took our children to residential school so they wouldn't learn where the fishing grounds are and where the clam beds are. And, and so they wanted us to not be out on the land. And so it's so important to have a guardian program that goes out, gets out in the water, gets out on the land, helps heal our, our broken lands. It's just an honor to do that work. In the Emerald Edge, Indigenous guardians are continuing cultural lifeways, protecting biological diversity and old growth forests. This is an example of power that Indigenous peoples have when their rights, responsibilities, and authority to manage Indigenous lands and waters are respected. As the Habitat Division Manager, I'm the first Macaw Tribal member to ever have this position. The individuals that held it before were very capable and knowledgeable, but they lacked an understanding of the traditional ecological knowledge. Your management of the landscape has to consider both dynamics. I think sustainable management is the key term that describes the approach that we want to have. When you look around the world, indigenous communities manage or control about 20% of the planet. And within that 20% is 80% of the remaining biodiversity. So they're incredibly important partners and, and stewards across the world. When conservation organizations and indigenous communities work together towards the same goal, they're a powerful force. A force powerful enough to persuade governments and corporations to action and inspire change in not only local communities, but regions, countries, and around the world.
it's a game changer where we are right now, knowing that we're protecting. And, and when we protect not only our resources, we're doing this not only for ourselves as Indigenous, it's for the world. The Emerald Edge is a lot of things to many different people. And while it is a natural climate solution to my family who've been a part of this place for millennia, this is home and the source of our language, culture, and identity. <laughs>